Hey guys, welcome back to the second channel. I was hoping that the first upload would be sometime in February or January, you never know. I've been fine mentally, it's just health-wise, in terms of physical health, I don't know what's been going on. Maybe it's because it's the year of the dragon and I'm a dragon, and when it is your year, you're supposed to have a bad year. Uh, I've said year like 15 times in like the past five seconds. But yeah, honestly, it's been kind of hell because... I started the year counting down to 2024 with tonsillitis, then I had a couple other sore throat fits, and then just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I had a canker sore on my uvula. For 10 days straight, I would eat yogurt and feel 17 knives stab through my mouth every single spoonful. It was horrible. I'm better now, thank god, and I hope to god that never happens again. Okay, there's the wood. But yeah, it kind of sucked because I wanted to make more of these videos, especially as I was only working on a video essay for the entirety of February. But now we're in March. Hopefully 2024 begins this month and I don't have to experience more pain. Going forward, I wanted to mention that alongside answering you guys' questions, which I will be doing more of, and I have a couple ideas, and I'm just going to throw them out real quick. I think what we'll do next is a YouTube lightning round. So in the description below, there's the Google Drive. If you have any questions about YouTube content creation, all that kind of stuff, just throw them down in the form. I also had this other idea for every time at the end of the month where I talk about the most interesting things and what shows I watched, all that kind of stuff from the previous month. I feel like that just is good to generate some consistency and also it allows me to talk about stuff I usually wouldn't talk about on the normal channel or on stream. I would talk about it on stream, I just don't stream that much. I also wanted to add stories to this channel as well, you know, just me telling stories. So if you have any ideas of stories you want me to tell, then, you know, leave them down in the comments or on the forums, whatever. And speaking of stories, today I'm going to tell you a story about my experiences with weed. They have not been great. The good news is, though, nothing has happened to me. I am the same person I was even after some traumatizing experiences. And also, now I just have two really entertaining stories to tell you guys. So anyways, we'll start with the first time I smoked weed, and it was with a bong, which I think is actually the easiest and fastest way to get high. To set things up real quick, my glasses were broken that night, so it was really hard to tell how much I was actually smoking. I had a plan B though, where my friend would help me out, and um, it, it worked for a little bit, but you know, when you progressively get higher, it, your reaction time gets worse. My friend was at this point baked, and when he was helping me, he'd be like a second or two late, so I'd be smoking even more than I should be. The thing is though, I wasn't feeling anything. Here's a quick tip to anyone who smokes for the first time, especially a bong. Even if you've taken a few hits, some very small hits, if you don't feel anything, don't smoke anymore. I didn't know that rule of thumb. I went, man, I'm not feeling anything. And then my friend's like, oh, you want to take another hit? At this point, his reaction timing has decreased by five seconds. So the following hit I took was way more than I should have taken. And immediately, I felt it. And I was only going to soar higher. My visuals just felt like there was a hue of green. You know, when you go on Photoshop and change the hue, that's how I felt. It's really weird. But also, I had this like permanent smile on my face, probably just because like my muscles were just so relaxed and I could not stop smiling. Like it was just a permanent smile. My friend also likes to listen to um, what he likes to call wizard music. I don't think there's any words that I could use to describe it. It was just so odd. Like it sounded like this, all right? Just, just bear with me here. It was like wah, 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 but it was like slower. Or at least I think it was slower. I, I can't remember entirely. But after that hit, we go back inside and I have the idea that me and my friend are both just gonna hang out on the living room and just have a good time. Instead, my friend walks straight back to his room and I am alone in the living room. Oh, and remember the wizard music? Well, my friend actually turned it off once we got inside, but it was still playing in my head. And I think the reason behind that is because it's like time kind of slows down when you're high. So anyways though, I am alone in the living room. The wizard music is constantly playing in my head. I can feel my body is like numb. It feels like rubber bands, honestly. But yeah, after I'm done wiggling my arms, 
you know, just looking around my surroundings, just kind of thinking to myself, haha, I'm high, that's kind of funny. I decide to go watch some TV. Quick tip, by the way, when you get high for the first time, don't do it alone. Or at least when you do get high with friends, make sure they stay with you. Now, when I tried to watch the TV, it wasn't really working. For some reason, that entire weekend, the remote just wasn't operating. Like, you would press some buttons, it would do nothing. And at this point, this frustrated me. A lot. And then after that, I started noticing that my thoughts were getting louder, and they were also getting faster. It was like, from 50 miles per hour to 100 miles per hour to 500 miles per hour, like, my thoughts started racing like nothing. It was really scary, like, I didn't really know what was going on, and I tried to control them. I tried to stop the thoughts. Here's another rule about being high. When you are high, you cannot control your thoughts, you just have to go with it. And that's just not my deal. And when I stopped those thoughts, well, they stopped for a second, but then they just kind of started piling on into each other. And then within three seconds, it was like everything went to shit so quickly. The best way to describe it was all of a sudden, those thoughts got louder and louder and louder until a pop just happened and everything went silent. The wizard music was gone. The thoughts were gone. I was just here in this empty room all of a sudden my vision changed a little bit like you know the minecraft setting where you're in like the fov like super max pro or whatever it's called that was me in that very moment it was that everything was silent and i was fucking anxious and i didn't know why i was anxious so that only made me more anxious and so i immediately rushed to my friend's room like i just like speed walk like i can barely even run i, I i'm like shaking at this point i knock on his door the funny thing is i fucking knocked on his door i'm in a peril right now and i am knocking on my friend's door i could have just like stormed in but anyways i go into his room though and i just look at him he turns around and he's like Hey, buddy, you, you doing okay? And I just look at him. And I, I'm pretty sure my face was probably terrified or something. And I'm trying to say words, but it's so difficult to, because I'm just so anxious. And at that point, I'm just like, I don't know what's going on, man. Like, th those were my exact words. So then he just gives me, like, a real big hug. You know, he's trying to comfort me at this point. And I remember I was so anxious, so terrified. I don't even know what I was terrified of. But I remember at this point that... He would just hug me, and I was like, do not let go. Like, if you let go, like, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, I was so scared of him letting go. And at that point, he takes me out to the living room. We get the TV working, figures out what to, like, put on the TV to help me out. You know, like, don't overstimulate me. And he's like, okay, let's watch some King of the Hill. And I was like, nah, King of the Hill, like, fuck that. I want to watch JoJo, the most overstimulating, like, thing you could probably watch if you are high. I was just like, I want to watch that. And I guess that's fine. I think as long as you are okay with what you're watching while you're high, you probably won't feel anything bad, right? You'll probably actually get some benefits from that. I don't know. Some people are different, right? I know people who will watch scary movies while they're high. I will never do that shit ever. So now JoJo's playing. I'm having an okay time, you know. At least my emotions are like back intact i guess but the thing is though my thoughts were still racing at like 500 miles per hour and it was so weird because i would go from one thing to the next within three milliseconds and there were times when i would think of a scenario and then think of like seven different ways to solve that scenario there's really no words to describe the feeling right it was just while watching JoJo, I was in a never-ending loop of just thoughts upon thoughts upon thoughts. And sometimes it would be kind of nice because then you dig into some parts of your life where it's like, oh yeah, I'm super grateful about this and this and this. But then you go into your insecurities and then you go into some other dark things, right? My, my mind was just going through it all in three hours and then it finally went away, thank God. So that's the first story. I didn't expect it to take this long to tell. But now here's the second story. This one's probably even longer. And there's a lot more to this one. So the second time was an edible. And the dynamics between a bong and an edible are very different. You know, bong, it's almost like it hits immediately. Edible, you know the meme. It's like, that edible ain't shit, and then it hits. Since the last time I was alone when the high hit, I was thinking that maybe I'll try again, and maybe it'll be better if I had friends just surrounding me the entire time, right? It'll be a different experience, it'll be a better experience, right? I can finally get the 
the prime weed experience that people always talk about or or whatever I, I don't fucking know so at this point my friends are instructing me on how to take the edible they're like okay take a tiny piece of this big gummy now one thing i completely forgot to ask was like how many milligrams was the whole gummy which is you know uh one mistake that i think you should all learn from you know don't don't do what i did anyways though this gummy was a hundred milligrams Honestly, this wasn't any normal gummy. Like, let me read the fuck shit of a name this was to you guys. So it was the 100 milligram D9 plus THCA. I don't know what the fuck that means, but it seems powerful. I learned later, usually beginners have like 5 to 10 milligrams. And the piece of gummy that I had was already 25 milligrams. Yeah, I was in for a ride, let me tell you. The gummy's supposed to hit within like 45 minutes to an hour or two, something like that. That's at least what my friends told me. But I didn't feel anything after that period. So I was like, damn, this is kind of annoying. Everyone's already so high right now, having a good time. Like, I want to experience this. This is peer pressure disguising itself. Remember that, okay? Listen, okay, it's a lot better to not have it hit while your friends are having a good time than to have it hit if you take another bit which is exactly what I did. Listen, okay, I'm making the mistakes, so you learn not to make these mistakes if you ever do this, okay? Simple. So I took another chunk. And now I was unknowingly at 75 milligrams, but still nothing after an hour. W what the hell was going on? Like, am I seriously this big of a body? Like, what's going on? So it's like 3 a.m. now, and my friends are about to go to sleep, you know, they're feeling relaxed, they're about to, you know, take a little nap after having it hit, and you know, Nothing was gonna happen to me, that's whatever, right? So I tried to go to sleep as well. And then I noticed that my thoughts were getting progressively faster than normal. And then boom, it hits. And it hit like a fucking truck. So now here I am, in the dark, my friends are like almost asleep, and I am high out of my goddamn mind. I, I was having an anxiety attack, but this one was a little less. And then my friends woke up, turned the lights on, calmed me down, and then I felt like a actual sense of relief for once you know i was like okay you know what maybe this is what the kind of like pleasing high everyone talks about right maybe i'll actually have a good time but as i said my thoughts were racing again and even more than last time so because of this my emotions this time were extremely unstable from this point on we're going to talk about the stages of this trip yes this wasn't just one little incident. This was a fucking roller coaster. We'll start with the tamest stage of this, which is me kind of panicking a little bit because I'm so high that I cannot swallow. Pause. I don't know exactly when I did this. I think it was like a few minutes after I got high. I tried to have a McDonald's fry that was extremely dry, like a typical McDonald's fry from an hour ago. Just shit. Now imagine chewing on that fry for what feels like an eternity. It was even worse because you feel like you can't swallow, you fear that if you do swallow, you're gonna choke, so you just endlessly chew this fry for the rest of time. Next stage, so you know how I told you guys about how the emotions were extremely unstable? Well, it was at this point where it, it was really, really concerning. My friends were trying to figure out what I, what they should like put on the TV to make sure once again that I'm not overstimulated, all that kind of stuff, like something very chill. I don't even remember what they put on, but honestly, I, I was not feeling it one bit. But I was so high that I could barely like conjure up a sentence. It was almost like I just couldn't say anything and tell them like, hey, could you please like put something else on? So uh, here I was laying down, watching this show, completely silent, and all while this is going on, I can feel my conscience dipping in and out of hell. And what I mean by hell is basically like the dark part of my brain, like all the dark thoughts of my brain, all there in this like condensed pile. And if I dipped any farther down into that pile, oh, I was not going to have a good time. But I was going all the way down to a point where... I wasn't experiencing the thoughts exactly, but the feeling of those thoughts kind of lingering around my conscious. Oh my god, I was so scared. I couldn't really, like, tell anyone, like, hey, change the show or whatever, right? So, what I tried to do, in complete desperation, how my friends saw it, it was just like, what the fuck is this guy saying? What is this guy doing? Like, he's just goofy. For me... I was desperately trying to make sure that I stay as far away from that realm of hell in my head as much as possible. And how I did it was I tried to entertain myself by saying the stupidest thing 
and repeating it every few seconds. And what did I say? I was just like this. Boy ain't no way. Boy ain't no way. Boy ain't no way. And I would say this numerous times just in desperation to keep myself at a level that I can, you know, feel a little safe in my mind. It's really morbid thinking about it, but it did actually help. And then the next stage hits. The shaking stage. This is when my body really just started tweaking out. It was really odd, because how it started, like, you could feel it, you know? It starts at your toes, like, they start just kind of, like, shaking a little bit. And then it starts slowly, progressively going up to your entire body. But when it hit, like, I could not stop just literally shaking. I didn't know if I was having a seizure. Like, I've had a seizure before. It was way back in seventh grade. I was just like, oh god, is it happening again? Or something else is happening. Like, I genuinely felt in numerous points of that night that I was going to die. But then, like, my friends start to kind of calm me down. I'm starting to, like, ask my friends, like, hey, like, am I having a seizure? And like, no, 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 you're just, you're just dancing. You're just dancing, you know? When you're high, and, like, especially when you're having this bad of a trip, you need good friends. You need friends that know what the fuck they're doing. You need to have friends that are reassuring. Because if it wasn't for them, holy shit, this would have probably been even worse. Once they kind of call me down, we're just like, oh yeah, you're just kind of dancing and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, okay, this is, this is kind of weird. I'm able to talk a little bit more. I'm more comfortable talking while my entire body is just fucking convulsing. And then that transitioned into just my legs starting to shake. Like, my entire torso was fine. Now it was just my legs. A and at this point, I start kind of imagining myself in the Tour de France. Listen, I know I sound insane, but I'm not kidding. This this is everything that happened. And I start like using my legs to kind of like cycle a little bit. Like I'm kind of imitating the cycling motion. I also had a bunch of ego trips. That shit was fun. I can't even lie, that shit felt good. I don't remember what I said, but my friend has told me numerous times that there was one point where I was like, kind of fighting someone. Not like actually fighting someone, just like fighting someone in my imagination. So I would just go like, kapow! Like I was like, literally acting like one of those fucking heroes in the comics, right? Just doing all these weird fighting moves, like thinking I'm like winning and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm the goat. I'm the best. I'm so fucking good. And then we reached the next stage. It was at this point that I could keep control of my body, but I was still moving quite a lot. And all I could remember from this particular stage was I started doing Mario impressions. You guys will never look at me the same after this. So to explain how this all worked, right? I was basically laying down, or at least like sitting, laying down on my friend's bed. And then I just start imitating Mario, like jumping and hitting the block. And I just constantly say, for the next three to four minutes. Wahoo! Here we go! Wahoo! Here we go! This was followed by Mickey impressions. Like, I just started doing, like, uh... Ho-ho! Ho-ho! ho And I just kept doing that for five minutes straight. Or at least, I, I don't know how long it was, but it felt like a goddamn eternity. I couldn't really truly explain to you why exactly I was doing Mickey impressions, but I do remember just a slither of that memory where I was thinking about LeBron. That was it. I think that might have been the reason why I just started doing Mickey impressions. I was like, haha, LeBron, Mickey, haha, and I just started laughing. Again, man, I was going crazy. But as this is going on, it gets progressively funnier for me because I'm just laughing. My friend's starting to, you know, join in. He's just like, yo, what the hell is going on? And we're just having a good time. And then five seconds later, everything just went to shit so quickly. While I was laughing, doing the Mickey impressions and stuff, I could feel the thoughts starting to get darker. It was like they were creeping out of hell and going towards the surface. And all I remember was, quite literally, every single doubt, every single dark thought I've ever had racing right at my brain at mock speed. And at that moment, once it hit, I went from laughing, doing Mickey impressions, to fucking bawling my eyes out. I was having a seriously bad anxiety attack. And looking back now, it's both terrifying, but also kind of funny. Because it's just imagine yourself, okay? Just for one second. Or th imagine, like, being the person watching this happen, right? You're watching someone do Mario and Mickey impressions, and then all of a sudden... 
<laughs> they just go directly to a fucking panic attack, right? And I can imagine, like, my point of view being pretty funny, too, because it's like, okay, like, Mario, wahoo, wahoo, like, and then Mickey impressions, and then all of a sudden, the darkness is coming, the darkness is coming, the darkness- After that happened, my friends had to calm me down a little bit, make sure I was okay, make sure I remembered my name and all that kind of stuff, because- I was really dipping into probably the most dangerous stage you could possibly get into being that high. Maybe there's worse, right? But for me, that felt like doom. That felt like the abyss. That felt like if I dipped any farther down into that and let those thoughts consume me, I probably wouldn't have been the same guy. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just making things up. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating. I don't know. But at least I'm here. At least things are back to normal. And it's just a funny story to tell. By the way, after that hellish experience, it wasn't over. I was a little more relaxed now. And I had more conviction, enough to tell my friend, hey, um, could you play some new job ace? And this is when things got better. I was having a great time. It genuinely felt like I was floating on the notes. And then YouTube autoplay got to City Pop. And I don't know why, but this triggered what I like to call the enlightenment phase. This is when I just started feeling powerful. Like, I could change the world. Like, I myself could achieve world peace. Pretty hard to explain. So let me just play this sound clip for you guys. Do right what now. you want. As long as it doesn't affect anyone else. Right. And like... They let people do what they want. Yeah, that's hurt a them, beautiful but... world. That is truly a beautiful world. There was also these times where I would just start, like, picking at my brain and start questioning everything around me. I remember at one point, I started just asking questions to my friends like, yo, like, what is learning? Like, how do we learn? Like, who created learning? Like, who in this, like, entire universe just thought to themselves like, yeah, this is learning. Like, it was, again, man, I was going crazy. Also, my friend told me uh, that I went on a four minute rant about how much I love women and um, what type of woman I was into. For those of you wondering, it's women with bangs. Finally though, after all that, this is when things started to calm down. I went to sleep. I did struggle to sleep numerous times while I was high, but I finally managed to get myself some Z's. And then I wake up in the morning, like 10 a.m. I'd say, thinking I'm not high anymore. I was still very high. The good news is I can control my emotions. The bad news, I'm baked and living an endless hell where my thoughts are going in 60 different directions at fucking mock speed. I remember about like an hour after waking up, me and my friends got some banh mi. It was pretty mid. But I did learn a very valuable lesson at that restaurant. When high, do not play Jenga. Because when you are high, you also feel very overstimulated. Everything around you, if you hear a sound, it sounds louder. And you can also feel it in your body. I think that's the best way I can really describe it. And for those of you who don't know what Jenga is, it's basically like a tower of these like wooden pieces. The game is you take a wooden piece uh, from this tower and then you put it on top. And over time, the stability of the building diminishes and it gets more difficult finding pieces to take from the building and putting on top and that results in it inevitably crashing to the floor and when it does that while you're high it feels like hell at least though like i can still control my emotions so nothing bad happened there and we eventually get back to the place i try to sleep off the high again and funnily enough the best way to get myself to fall asleep was listening to a video of um Tokyo train announcements and honestly I still kind of do it like it's it's really nice to listen to I, I think I am actually obsessed with Japan but yeah that's why weed just ain't for me I know what some of you people are thinking like oh well you know Maxwell you smoked too much in the first story and also in the second story you were a dumbass and took way too much of an edible I know but I also remember last year when I smoked a little bit of a joint and I was with friends and I wasn't even that high like the high went away very quickly but I remember when I was just a tad bit high, I still felt very anxious. So yeah, man, you know, like, I, I had some good times, I had some bad times. Mostly bad times, so I'm never doing this shit ever again. Don't let that drive you away from doing it, just be careful, right? That's, that's all I'm saying. Weed is completely safe, and as long as you take the right precautions, don't do anything stupid, do not crumble to peer pressure, and also, don't smoke more or take more if you're not feeling anything, I think you'll be okay.